So today we are going to start with the um, fourth lecture of demography and in this lecture we will be covering dependency ratio, vital statistics, natural increase in the population and how the population grows and how we can calculate growth rates of population. So let's move towards the dependency ratio. Dependency ratio is defined as the ratio of population who are economically dependent to those who are economically independent. If you brainstorm, then you can very well imagine that what is the proportion of the population or which population is actually dependent on independent population. Economically independent population means that this is the population who earns money by doing some um, by involving themselves in some occupation and economically dependent population is that population who cannot go for earning and who is dependent on all those who are earning and are fulfilling their needs so by looking into this picture we can very well imagine that the center of the picture shows that the, there, is an, uh, there is a couple who is in the reproductive age group and um, it is also known as the productive age group because in this age group the population is actively involved in their occupations and they are earning but they have the responsibility to cover of their parents and of their children as well. So the children uh, under 15 years of age are dependent on them um, according to the WHO definition and all the population which is more than 60 years of age or 65 years of age are dependent on them. But if we look carefully in the scenario of Pakistan, we can very well imagine that uh, the dependency ratio is very high because most of the females in our um, country are economically dependent on their husbands so the dependency ratio of pakistan becomes much more high as compared to other uh, countries where the females are actively involved um, in uh, earnings so um, and further it aggravates the situation when we have somebody disabled in the household as well because then the disabled persons will be also included but according to the definition of demographers, we can calculate dependency ratio as such that the dependent population is that population which is below 15 years of age and who are more than 64 years of age. An economically independent population is the population which is between 15 to 64 years of age. So, how can we calculate dependency ratio that the population of children below 15 years of age and the elderly population above 65 years of age, this is the dependent population divided by the working age population which is 15 to, between 15 to 64 years of age. The problem with the dependency ratio calculation in Pakistan is that the uh, people assume that all the population between 15 to 64 years is working and they are earning but in uh, Pakistani population majority of the females uh, do not work uh, and they are again dependent on their spouses and on the people who are uh, actually earning and these females do not earn then in Pakistan, the uh, occupational capacity of disabled people is also very less. So, even we calculate the dependency ratios in Pakistan with this formula, but this does not represent the true picture of Pakistani population or the population where the joint family systems are there. So, um, but to maintain the uniformity, the same formula is used worldwide. So, for this formula, Pakistan has dependency ratio of 84.4. It means for each 100 productive people, there are 84.4 dependent people uh, on them. And 
you can very well compare it with japan that for each 100 independent people who are earning their the dependency ratio is only 43.6 percent meaning means that only 43 percent are dependent on 100 economically independent people there is a vast difference between the two populations so by using the same formula now calculate the dependency ratio for this uh, numerical it says that in 2011 australian census results tell us that 19% 19.3% of the population is aged under 15 and 14% are over 65 the remaining 66.7% are aged 15 to 64 So calculate the dependency ratio now. Okay so let's move forward now your second task is explain this graph of dependency ratio which was obtained in 2011 by uh, after the census in australia so write down how can you explain this graph of dependency ratio you have to submit these assignments to us within the completion of uh, within 15 minutes of the completion of the lecture okay so moving forward what are the processes which can affect the population growth we all know and we have discussed in our previous lectures that the multiple vital events which affect the growth of the population include number 1 birds the number of birds if it is increasing definitely the population is growing number 2 deaths if the deaths are reduced in a population by provision of adequate healthcare services and because of the improvement of health of the geriatric population population is growing marriages the number of registered marriages truly reflect that how the population will be increasing in coming years migrations both the migrations in migrations and out migrations show the change in the population in migration increases the population and out migration decreases the population fertility patterns also affect the uh, population growth rate and there are multiple fertility indicators which are used which we will be discussing in our next lectures uh, but just to give you a clue there is a total fertility rate there is general fertility rate total marital fertility rate gross reproduction rate net reproduction rates so these reflect actually the fertility pattern of population growth so uh, moving forward as i have already mentioned that number one factor which affects the population growth is birds and to calculate the birds the most effective view uh, most effective indicator is to calculate the crude birth rate as the name is suggestive it's a crude indicator it actually based on the total number of live births which have occurred in a population in a specific period of time but then why do we call it as crude rate because the crude rates does do not reflect age specification and gender specification they cannot be used for comparisons at the national level and international level for making more specifications we calculate specific rates and for comparison 
at the national level and at the international level, we calculate the standardized rates. We have already discussed them in detail when we have discussed the health indicators. So coming back towards the crude birth rate, let me emphasize again that crude birth rate does not mean that we have a rough estimation of birth. No, the births are registered, although the registration system of birth in Pakistan is not that good because not every birth is reported in the Nadra. But, um, uh, but we say that we actually reflect a true representation of total number of births, of the registered births which have occurred in a community in a specific time period. And we divide it in by the uh, total population of that area, which is taken at the media population, which is taken on 1st of July of every year, multiplied by 1,000. We, again, to tell you that the crude birth rate is called as crude because it cannot give a specific description according to age and gender. And it does not give us the true indicator which can be compared nationally and internationally. That's why it is known as crude birth rate. So let's move forward. Please calculate crude birth rate for the town of Lakhudair near Lahore, where 5,663 births have taken place. And the total media population of that area was 1,49,442. Please calculate crude birth rate. Moving forward, the next important process which affects the population is death. So, to assess the increase or decrease in the population, we calculate crude death rates. Again, the crude death rate is basically calculated on the total number of deaths which are registered in a defined geographical area in a defined specific time period. But it is called crude because it does not give a specification according to the deaths according to the age group and according to the gender distribution or according to the cause. For those things to calculate, we calculate age specific mortality rate, cause specific mortality rate, gender specific mortality rate. But for particularly change in population growth, we calculate crude death rates. So the crude death rate formula is the total number of deaths registered in an area in a specific time period divided by the total media population into 1000. And again, the media population is taken on 1st of July. So please calculate the crude death rate. In a peri-urban area of Karachi, records of Nadra showed that 153 deaths occurred because of tuberculosis in that area and 264 deaths because of malaria in that area. In addition, it was expected that during the recent epidemic of corona, 2,500 deaths are expected. Media population of that area is 1,24,690. Please calculate the crude death rate of this area. Okay, the crude birth rates uh, of different countries range from one value to another value. If the crude rate birth is increasing, then it shows that the population is increasing at an urgent rate. For example, the least developed countries where the services for the family planning methods are not available 
And uh, the best example of least developed countries are the African countries, Kenya, Ghana, etc. They have high crude birth rate, but uh, their crude birth rates range from 40 to 40.4% per thousand. And then in developing countries, this indicator ranges to 23.1%. And the crude birth rate of developed countries is only 11.2. So you can very well imagine that in developed countries, the birth rate has been reduced because of the proper health education, because of the proper provision of family planning services, because of proper counseling services. And again, there is another reason that in developed countries, the legalities uh, of marriages are making it difficult and people are avoiding to get married. But in least developed countries, the birth rate is still very high. They are producing children as the baby boomers were producing their children. And the population is increasing at a very high rate in least developed countries. Going towards crude death rate, again, it ranges from one value to another value. For more developed countries, the range of crude death rate is only 10.2 means the total number of deaths in developed countries is really low. Why this death rate is low? Because the healthcare services are adequate, because screening services are there, geriatric health clinics are established there, the healthcare workers go and provide services, their disability is managed, their mental health, uh, mental ill health uh, problems are uh, also managed, and the uh, Provision of good nutrition and adequate healthcare services improves the uh, death rate. But in least developed countries, we still have a high death rate. In developed uh, in developing countries, uh, the um, there is a double burden of disease. It means the deaths are being caused by the infectious diseases as well as the non-infectious diseases. In developed countries, we have pretty controlled the infection diseases the majority of deaths are occur because of the accidents or because of the non-communicable diseases but in developing countries we still have high mortality rate because of the infections and because of the non-communicable diseases are also increasing showing increasing trend so we have a double edge sword uh, in the developing countries and least developed countries how do we calculate natural increase in population? The natural increase in population is calculated by subtracting deaths from the birds. If, it means that if a population in a defined geographical area is increasing because of birds, and again, it is increasing uh, because there are less deaths, so by subtracting deaths from the births, we can calculate the natural increase in that population. If you are interested in calculating the rate of natural increase, then you can calculate it by uh, subtracting deaths from the births divided by the total population into 1000. So you can calculate the rate of natural increase in that population. Fine. So please calculate the natural increase in this population. Okay, so we all know that not only the process of births and deaths affect the uh, growth rate uh, of a population, but the net migration also affects the change in population. So the net migration, if you will subtract deaths from the births, that will be one component. Then the net migration can be calculated by in-migration minus out migrations will give you the net migration and you will calculate the natural increase plus net migration divided by the total population it will give you a growth rate of a community in a specific time period so please calculate the growth rate of this um, 
area which is known as Largana. Uh, actually, this is, sorry, this is the, uh, this is the numerical based on the uh, population growth rate, which I have already told you that in 2002, a Central African nation had 8,320 immigrants and 7,249 immigrants according to their international arrivals and departure statistics. So the total population was estimated to be about um, uh, almost 12,58,000. So what will be the net migration rate? This is actually you can see that the net migration shows that the immigrants minus the immigrant population divided by the total media population into 1000 will give you the uh, value of the total net migration. So whenever you want to calculate the uh, growth rate of a population, you must know that if you have the number of births and number of deaths, you can calculate the natural increase separately. And if you have the uh, in migrations and out migrations um, number is given again, you can calculate the net migration rate as well. And by using this formula, you can use the uh, you can calculate the growth rate of that community. Fine. Okay. So I will end my lecture here and we will continue from this onwards tomorrow. Thank you so much.